Guys who married bridezillas what happened after the wedding? Got into a huge fight about broccoli on the honeymoon. All my fault of course. I knew then it was a mistake. Toughed it out for two more years of abuse before I left. So glad I did. I didn't marry the bridezilla. But I had coordinated her wedding. We had a death in the family. Six month old baby. A few days prior to the wedding. I called the bride and told her the situation. And said that my assistant would be stepping in for me so that I could attend the funeral. She told me to send my assistant to the funeral and that I had better be at her wedding. I told her I would be sending her a refund and that no one would be coming to her wedding. The groom ended up leaving her after this whole thing went down. Suffice to say he really dodged a bullet there. First wife was a bridezilla. During the honeymoon she realized she was married and the wedding day was history. She wanted the big wedding. Which she had. Not the marriage. The next two years were hell until she finally tapped out. I was young and stupid and the thought of divorce never crossed my mind. I don't know why it didn't. I guess I just assumed I'd be miserable the rest of my life. When she told me she was leaving it felt as if the weight of the world was off of my shoulders. On a happy note her parents were still paying off the wedding when we divorced. That's what happens when you allow your daughter everything she wanted. Including two wedding dresses. Not a bridezilla. But a millzilla. Wife wanted a regular sized wedding. Nothing fancy. At a historic venue she loved. We had planned for about 100 guests at most. And we would do a lot of the work. Mill started to pressure about having to invite tons of people. In-laws are loaded in social butterflies. Change the venue. Change the photographer. Etc. I didn't give a shit since it was all to make my wife happy. And did my best to adjust. Finally one day about two months before the wedding my wife had a breakdown crying because of all the changes and bullshit from Mill. Told wife I would handle Mill from now on. Called Mill and read her the riot act and told her to cool her shit or we would just get a courtroom wedding and forget about the religious wedding. Huge deal to the family. She fought me for weeks. Phil fought me. BILs fought me. Told them all to pound sand. We had our original wedding. I was folding invitations and favors the night before until 3 a.m. But by fuck we got it done. Of course. Mill still changed the DJ and photographers without me noticing. So we had completely wrong music. And we have yet to see the pictures. 16 years later. And we have minimal contact with the family. I was called the bridezilla. After getting back with my ex-boyfriend I broke up with from high school. His parents got into his head that he should propose. His parents got married at the age of 19 and they thought that since we're 19 we should follow in their footsteps. We were only back together for over one month at that point. Nothing against anyone that married young or married suddenly. He proposed. I was excited because this is supposed to be an important moment in my life and I can plan the beautiful wedding I always dreamed of. I immediately started to look at venues since we had 10 months to plan. His mom complained to everyone behind my back that I was planning too soon. His family are strict Catholics so when I said I didn't want to have a mass for our wedding, they made sure the priest talked to me to convince me to change my mind. When I planned to go wedding dress shopping, she complained again about how I was doing it too soon. Eight months out from the wedding. And then she brought some of her kids without asking me. On top of that, I invited a mutual friend of ours. And I got a text from that friend on my way to the bridal shop asking if she could bring her kids. Because my fiancé's mom told her to. His mom also got mad at me for not including all. Seven. Of her daughters in the wedding party. Whenever I tried to plan wedding stuff with my fiance, he. Couldn't handle it. Because planning the proposal took too much energy out of him. That lasted a few months. Whenever his family tried controlling the wedding. I got bothered because they were planning around themselves. They said that this isn't about me and my fiance. It's about their family. Because their family is a. Big deal. And this wedding was about them. Overall, they called me bridezilla to my face multiple times because I didn't like how they were controlling my wedding. Within those few months I remembered why I broke up with my fiance the first time. So I broke up with him again. F that. My coworker married a crazy bridezilla. I'll try to just just hit the bullet points of what happened leading up to. During. And after the wedding. But it's still a lot. 1. The moment he proposed she lost her sex drive. According to him she also basically stopped acting like the woman he fell in love with and started acting like her real self. Which was batshit crazy. 2. A week after he proposed she quit her job because her full-time job was now planning the wedding. The wedding was horrible. I'm getting there. 
3. She had a fight with his mother because the bride demanded the groom's mom pay for half the wedding but get zero input and wasn't allowed to contribute to the guest list. Which was 95% the bride's friends and family. 4. Brid. Who was 30 years old. Subsequently egged her future MIL's house. 5. When bride and groom had a spat about the egging. He went to the work the next day and she shaved her head and sent him video of her screaming and sobbing as she buzzed her hair off in the bathroom. I worked with him. He showed me the video when he said he had to leave. And I strongly urged him to have her assessed by a psychiatrist. He made a dumb joke about sexy with a crazy girl as the best kind and I pitied him. 6. Wedding was in a pool. Clubhouse. In summer. It was much too small for the 150 plus people the invited. Someone forgot to turn the AC on until after the place was packed. A lifeguard showed up in a swimsuit to turn it on. But it did little given it was already sweltering. 7. Two rows of chairs in the clubhouse were ribboned off with. Reserved. Signs on them. So no one sat in them. They were later occupied by the six seated bridesmaids. Leaving about a dozen chairs open once the wedding started. The one groomsman stood by the groom and didn't sit. Elderly people were left standing or reduced to sitting on the floor as there was no way to get to the chairs once the ceremony started. 8. Bride showed up 90 minutes late. Having been unhappy with her hair, wig, and makeup so she took it all off and did it herself. So all the guests are standing for the one. 5 hours waiting for her. Groom was literally standing at the altar sweating his ass off in a wool suit in the South's high summer, and was clearly not sure if she would show up, he looked like he felt sick. 9. When bride showed up she burst into the clubhouse. Marched down the aisle and snapped at the officiant. 2. Hurry up and get started. 10. During the prayer while the religious groom had his head bowed she turned to wave at everyone. I don't pray so I was looking up. Then she told her mother to go get her some water. She drank a bottle of water during the prayer and kept grinning and waving at people in attendance. Paying zero mind to her groom in front of her. 11. When the ceremony was over tables were crammed into the clubhouse and apparently only family and immediate friends of the bride had seats at tables. The rest of us were going to be standing outside during the reception. So I didn't see a dance. A speech. The cake cut. Nothing. 12. The food was served outside. In the southern US July heat with bugs everywhere. The bride made the groom go get her food over and over. He meekly stood in line with the other 150 people, until people insisted he go sit and let them get food. Nope. She told him to get food. So he said he had to be the one to get her food. 13. She never left her table. Never greeted any of her guests. 14. Apparently they had a massive fight as they were leaving the following day for the honeymoon. Bride laying all the failures of the wedding she planned at him and his mom's feet, she threw his luggage out of the car and tried to drive to the airport by herself. But he had their tickets and jumped on the hood to stop her from driving off in his car. 15. He got fired about a month after the wedding because he kept showing up late. Leaving early. And leaving in the middle of day. Usually because she called him with some crisis. 16. One year after the wedding I got a thank you note for my wedding gift. Which was signed by just the bride with a note that said. As you may have heard Ryan and I have had bumpy start in our first year as a married couple. And we're separated now. Thanks for the lovely gift. The divorced a couple months later. I have performed a few ceremonies that came about because things fell through for whatever reason. Only one of which I had to walk away from. I had received a call from my sill that one of her friends was supposed to get married and the priest had passed away the week before. They didn't want to change the date and move anything. So they had asked if she knew anyone who could help out. I said sure. When is the wedding? It was supposed to be in an hour. Okay. I was on my way home from work where I had finished up an important meeting. I miss meeting in person. And was reasonably well dressed. So I called home to say I was going to be late. When I arrived. The. Happy couple. Had looked at me and asked if I had proper priest's vestments. Um. No. I don't. And if I did. I would probably not be carrying them in my car. The bride had asked if I was able to go buy some and come back. I told her that I wouldn't begin to know where to buy something like that. The groom then told me that if I can't even try, then maybe I should leave. I did. My sill told me they cornered a priest at the church and told him he had to marry them or they would sue the church for a breach of contract and that it was the moral thing to do. They divorced nine months later when her surprise baby was a different ethnicity than he was. Didn't help that he had a side piece as well. 
She stabbed me in the thigh during the meal at our wedding. Still in prison. Edit. Thanks for the upvotes. Kind of the opposite end of the spectrum. My wife and I eloped a few months before our wedding and kept it mostly a secret. Then on the day of, we could just focus on having an awesome party for us and our friends. Our pastor canceled the day of after standing is up for the rehearsal. My wife checked into the hotel the morning of and the lady asked, lady at counter, is there anything else I can help you with? Wife jokingly, yes, a pastor, lack, our omelet chef is ordained, lack. Hey Tony, you busy tonight? Tony, no. Wife, okay. As someone who used to manage a men's warehouse I can't wait for someone to start the thread about prom moms. She left me three months later. After the wedding and vacation was over I told her we need to pay the debt we just accumulated. She said she didn't have much on her credit card and could pay it off in a couple of months if I picked up some of her bills. I agreed and three months later she had her credit card paid off she told me she wanted a divorce. We had a budget for the wedding and should have had no debt at the end but in the last few weeks before the wedding she suddenly had to spend a ton of money on wedding shit I had never even heard of before. And when I say she spent a ton of money it came out of my pocket. Edit. I feel I should give a little more explanation about how I ended up with the wedding debt since several people have asked why it wasn't split evenly and about annulment. We didn't have any kids and only had assets we brought into the relationship. By taking the debt I was able to prevent her from hiring a lawyer to represent her in the divorce which would have forced me to do the same and cost significantly more than the debts. The debt in itself was about $8.000, oh, 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 which isn't a crippling amount but is still a lot of money to me. That was just the amount over budget on the wedding. She also had a car loan which I, thankfully, did not end up with. She comes from an upper middle class family and has a trust which is not something I could have gone after in the divorce. I make nearly double in income of what she does. A lawyer would have advised her to claim alimony. She wouldn't have gotten a lot but she would have gotten something. The judge asked her repeatedly if she wanted to claim alimony. Annulment is very uncommon where we live. We looked into it but did not meet the criteria for one. Instead we went to a quickie divorce lawyer who just puts paperwork together and then we had to do everything else. I luckily work with lawyers and was able to discuss things with them. None of them are divorce lawyers but they gave me a general idea of how things would work out if it got ugly. My buddy married a bridezilla. She was a bridezilla long before the wedding. And they had dated for about 7 years. I have no idea how they are doing. I just kind of stopped talking to him a few years after she claimed I ruined his birthday by remaining sober. I had driven 5 hours to be at his birthday. I'm a bride to be and the way people are encouraging some bridezilla behavior from me is something I never expected. I got incredibly lucky and found the exact wedding dress I wanted at Goodwill in my size with the tags on. And people are like. Shush don't tell people. Tell them you got it for one dollar. Oh oh oh. Brag about how much you got it for. Yeah no. I'm more proud that I found it thrifting. Also for brides on a budget this is where I found mine. Lots of great affordable options. Shop Goodwill. Com. Wedding.